Hey there, Lickin' Riffers! Welcome to the Crowded Couch Sessions here on Lickin' Riff. This is my good friend, Elad, and um, we're gonna have a series of, uh, of soloing lessons here on Lickin' Riff because um, just me soloing with myself would kind of defeat the purpose because the, the idea with soloing lessons is about challenging yourself. And what kind of lesson would it be if I'm not challenging myself? So in the first lesson, um, I'm going to give you uh, a really nice exercise for soloing, for improvisation, and for noodling, um, which is the one chord soloing exercise, the one chord soloing exercise. And um, the premise is a simple one. You solo over one chord. And you'll see once we get started um, that it's, uh, <laughs> he's just sitting there looking at me and, and he's like, <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, let's let's uh, let's start playing. But we're gonna start playing in a second. So uh, we're gonna take a chord, any chord, pick a chord, any chord, and um, we're gonna solo. Right? First, I'm gonna solo. Then he's gonna solo. Where uh, we have different uh, soloing styles. So you'll see you'll see a couple of examples instead of just me soloing with myself. So um, we're gonna start with a minor. Just A minor. Why A minor? Because that's kind of like the cliche, um, the, the, the cliche scale for the go-to scale for guitar soloists. A minor. And uh, as you'll see, um, I'm used to. If if you know my lessons, uh, my soloing lessons so far, you know that I'm used. To, I'm used to soloing with my fingers, which is why I'm gonna solo with a pick, because I want to challenge myself, and I'm gonna walk you through my thinking process while I solo and then the lad's gonna solo I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna be the rhythm guitar player and um, and you'll see how he approaches the soloing now it gets challenging because you start with your go-to licks and your go-to positions and everything and in about 10 or 20 seconds you start getting bored so you have to start going outside the box, okay? Outside of your own, and I don't mean the pentatonic box. It wasn't a pun. Uh, I mean going entirely outside the box and thinking of new ways to solo over the chord. So, um, good friend, good man, <laughs> start playing A minor. Okay. So, pentatonic, right? Okay, but immediately you hear that the pentatonic scale doesn't doesn't quite cut it, right? So you have to think, you have to. Um, I, I have no idea how this is gonna go. This is the first time I'm using more than one microphone. So um, you hear that the pentatonic doesn't quite cut it because this is one chord. So you have to you have to think more than that. You have to. Um, I'm I'm a very melodic soloist. I don't uh, I don't shred. I don't play fast licks. Um, I I always think melodically. But if it's one chord, it's one harmony. So it's difficult to get to get melodic when you have one chord. So you have to think about uh, ways about new tricks and new things. Now, um, as there are no mistakes in music, you can start getting complicated as you go along. So, please. Thank you. Okay, so... Okay, so that was the Dorian note on 7 on the 2nd string. Okay, now if I'm soloing with my fingers... But again, I got stuck, so I'm going to change the scale. Now 
now I'm starting to try some arpeggios. I'm trying to try some arpeggios. I tried the A major arpeggio just to hear that, okay, that outside note there. But I'm not gonna try, I'm not gonna try this note because it's gonna be too dirty because he's playing this note. So I'm not gonna play the note adjacent to it. I'm gonna play the high note. So that's the logic why I did the A major here. Okay, instead of, instead of A minor. And that's just my thinking process and we're just getting started and wait until he starts soloing. It's gonna be entirely different, okay? I'm just embarrassing myself right now. Okay, go. <laughs> But my fingers still want to go to the pentatonic. So I'm gonna break myself out of it. a little bit of that was a little bit of diminishing now I could go full exotic if I want fingers I'd solo better but that's the point I want to get myself outside my comfort zone so let me just give you an example of how I would play with my fingers and then he's gonna solo for us I can do it with with a pick as well. The thing that I did. Huh? But this is this is exactly the point that I wanted to show you, and, I, and I'm glad that I stumbled upon it. When I played with my fingers, I did I did this. Right? Okay. All, all sorts of uh, just breaking the scale with fifths and sixths intervals okay and I can do it with my with with a pick but I'm you I'm too used to thinking with my fingers I'm less used to thinking with a pick and this is a really nice psychological side of soloing if you're used to a pick then try soloing with your fingers try breaking yourself out of the comfort zone and if you're used to soloing with your fingers, try soloing with a pick and get yourself out of the comfort zone because you can do anything you can do with your fingers, you can do with a pick and vice versa if you practice enough. Okay? But, um, but I think better with my fingers because I'm a finger stylist. And now he's gonna solo for us. Um, and you'll see that it's a, he, he'll take a completely different route because he's used to different things. So... And again, I'm too used to... You see, he's clearly used to a thing. <laughs>
it's time for <laughs> to change the chord, right? Yeah. Um, now, I, I'm not paying him to talk. Uh, <laughs> you know, speaking parts get paid better. Uh, uh, no, I'm kidding. We're really friends, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I do have friends <laughs> that aren't animals. Uh, okay, so um, now when I when I watched him solo, I was like, "Oh right, you can do that. <laughs> you can do that. Oh right, you can do that." Now you see when, when I that's the psychological aspect that I was talking about. When, when I'm soloing with my fingers, I'm I'm very I'm very harmonic. But when I solo with, with a pick, all that goes out the window. I don't even remember what I'm used to doing because I'm so not used to soloing with a pick. So now we're going to try a different chord. Uh, let's try B7. Just you know, going over the alphabet. A minor, B7. So we're going to start with the blues, obviously, because this is a seventh chord. Doesn't, doesn't change. It was supposed to go to the next chord, but it didn't. accompanying someone you have to find ways of playing the same chord you have to find ways of, of, of playing the chord itself you have to find new grooves yeah, you have to yeah. Yeah, you have to play with the chord itself in order to make it 
interesting as well. So um, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. It's a real challenge because you you won't believe how fast you run out of licks, how fast you run over all of your go-to licks, and you have to start thinking outside the box. Right? It's not an easy exercise. So. Um, Thank you very much for watching and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you very much. That. You. And um, we'll see you in the next uh, video on the crowded couch sessions here <laughs> on Lick and Riff. And I will see you in the next lesson. Bye for now. Enjoy. <laughs>